How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Arthur and today we're going to go through task three of the Citibank Investment Banking Virtual Internship. In this task, we're going to be plugging a whole bunch of numbers. We're basically doing a comps analysis to see the multiples that we can get from our comparable companies. The two key multiples that we're after here are our enterprise value to EBITDA number and also our enterprise value to revenue. This just helps provide a bit of context to the value that we're going to attribute to Best Buy. So that's usually a good like first step is to have a look at companies that we think are in the same space, serve similar customers, maybe have similar products. It's usually a pretty good indicator of what the market is valuing those companies at that point in time. So I think the question that a lot of people will have is where do I find this information? And you can find it in a number of places. One is Yahoo Finance. Another one is probably the Wall Street Journal. Uh, if you have access to something like Cap IQ, you can also use that. The only thing I'll say is just try and stay consistent between the source. I just went with Yahoo Finance. That's the easiest thing. Everybody who has internet should have access to this info. Let me walk you through exactly where I found found the info for the different light items we were inputting. One other thing before I get into the nitty gritty of this task, there are four, there are four typical valuation methods that investment bankers use to value a company. This is one of them, which is essentially looking at publicly traded comparable companies or comps. I think it might be useful if I just list off the other ones that are often used. So one is also called precedent transactions, which is basically the multiples at which similar companies have been sold in the past. That is actually a pretty good indication of what the company is being sold for. Sometimes companies are sold a bit at a bit of a premium due to people people buying a controlling share of the company and maybe people are willing to overpay a little bit for some supposed synergies with other companies that they might own or if it's an acquisition for another bigger corporate parent. Then we also have the discounted cash flow. That is usually a more conservative bottom up build of sort of the intrinsic value of the company. And the last one is a leveraged buyout, which a private equity firm typically would use to value a company. It kind of accounts for the private equity taking on some amount of debt to help finance this transaction and then pay that debt off over time. Those are the four main valuation methods that people use. I thought that would be useful context as you approach this task. So let's start with Best Buy as an example here. Pretty simple, the share price is essentially the share price. So uh, another thing that you could do to calculate the next number, which is that market cap, is you could find the total number of shares outstanding, which should be in one of these summary pages and can multiply it by the share price. I believe I just searched just on Google and just whatever the market cap was, that's what I recorded. Next number that we're looking for is a little bit more complicated because it's the enterprise value. And for that, we need that short-term debt, long-term debt, cash and cash equivalents. So we need to look at our some of our balance sheet items. So let's go to the balance sheet here. This is sort of the financial year end that we're after. The cash and cash equivalents are in current, current assets. So this is where I'm getting this number from. Sometimes it breaks it out. I think I used this one. Then our debt is in our liabilities section. So let's look at total liabilities, current liabilities. So we have here a portion of our uh, current debt and capitalization. And then we we can go to uh, total non-current liabilities to see our long-term debt. Sometimes it's broken out right here. So I didn't actually use this lease figure. I believe I just calculated this long-term debt. So if you're using Yahoo Finance, this is exactly what it should look like for you. Just plug those numbers in and go through that calculation. So for the revenue, that's in the income statement, which is what we were looking at uh, when we first got on this page. Uh, we have TTM or LTM. This stands for trailing 12 month or last 12 month period. This is where we're getting this figure from. And then our EBITDA number is also coming from the income statement right here. Just a side note, if you're looking for the EBITDA number from something like a 10K, that number is not always broken out. So luckily it is broken out in Yahoo Finance, so that just makes it a little bit easier for us. I'm not sure if uh, if the Wall Street Journal breaks out EBITDA. I think Capital IQ does, but I'm, I'm not expecting any of you guys to have access to that. But yeah, you can just repeat this process for the rest of our companies 
Every, every single one can be found on Yahoo Finance. You just plug those in. And then for our multiples, once we have the revenue and EBITDA numbers, we can effectively find our EV to EBITDA multiple and EV to revenue multiple as well. All right, so as we open up our Excel file, our goal is effectively to fill out these columns right here. And I have added these hyperlinks. This is just for my reference. This is where I'm pulling the data from. Uh, the Yahoo data for the different columns. I'm gonna skip through some of this and then uh, we'll fast forward through some of this and then stop to explain any formatting or some additional shortcuts that I'm doing. So first of all, we're just gonna fill in all our uh, share prices. So once that's done for the market cap, I'm actually going to create an additional column. Uh, to do that, I just did control space and then control shift plus is going to give us another column. Uh, I'm going to fill in the market cap figures. Also notice that the formatting is such that we have in the first row, we have dollar signs and then for the ones for the numbers below it, we do not have a dollar sign. Just because this is in millions I and these numbers here were in billions, I am going to uh, change that. That's why I created this additional column. There we go. So if, if you do control enter, that's gonna flow through all the way down. One comment on this is that we can also calculate this using shares outstanding. Here I just hard coded the market cap numbers in and here I'm just, I realized that I didn't add the decimals and it, the decimals actually are important. I need to see the full million number. So I'm just adding those back in here. If we do control space, we can select the whole column. And then if we do uh, Alt A, B, we can group that and then hide it away. Okay, next up, we have our enterprise value. Once again, we can do uh, control space, control shift plus plus to add three more columns. And I'm just gonna name these columns for uh, our short-term debt, long-term debt and cash and cash equivalents. This is gonna help us work through these numbers to arrive at the enterprise value. If you find the enterprise value online somewhere, I suppose you can also use that figure, uh, but just for consistency, this is how I'm going to do it. And those numbers that I showed you on Yahoo Finance, I'm just gonna plug those in. Ends up taking a little bit of time, but it's not that difficult once you know where to find these numbers. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this. All right, once we have that going, we can highlight these cells and then it's just a walk to the enterprise value. We begin with the market cap. We subtract the debt and add back the cash and that flows through nicely there. Notice how converting our market cap into millions has helped us because every other figure is also here in millions. So we can just add them together or subtract them. All right, our long-term, uh, sorry, last 12 month revenue and our last 12 month EBITDA. Again, we can just plug these numbers in from the Yahoo page on the income statement. I will fast forward through this as well. Once we've done that, our EBITDA margin is our EBITDA divided by our revenue for the last 12 months. And then for the EV to uh, revenue is our revenue multiple and our EV to EBITDA number is our EBITDA multiple. So that's the correct formula there. I'm gonna copy that down. Just checking. And I think that looks good. We can just copy it across. So just make sure the enterprise value uh, column is the fixed column. 
so I just had that had that wrong and then I was selecting EBITDA instead of revenue. Okay, so we can group those by going to uh, Alt A G, close that up, we don't need that. And then the last part is just doing our, our mean and our median calculations for our comparables. Again, this is for context, so we just use our average formula here, select those and then you do control enter and it will fill out um, all those cells that you selected. The median, you do the same thing. Awesome, and that's it. All right, that's it for this task, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions as you watch this video. Once again, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.